HighSchoolCube.com. Jimmy Dragna, Coach Trey Stoner, and Earl Young. The triumvirate for you tonight in the championship ball game coming your way at the McDipper 39th Annual Richton Park, Illinois, Rich South High School. It will be in their home uniforms. Crete Moni, the Warriors of Coach Tom Kappel in his first year, but no stranger to high school ball with a championship in the late 90s at Hillcrest High School. First year for Kappel here, but he's got his ball club playing excellent basketball with a huge, huge victory last night in overtime over the previously undefeated Seton Hall Sting, 67-66. Creep Monet led by the point guard Marvis Keith, the 5'11 junior, number one. Double checking our starters for you to make sure we're giving you correctly. Marius Hopkins, the three guard, the 6'4 senior, who wears number two and averages five and a half rebounds per ball game. The three guard will be Michael or Orris. He headed for the University of Illinois as an Illini recruit next year, 11 point average, four assists, four rebounds for the 6'3 senior. The power forward, Laquan Tweadwell, 12 points a ball game, six rebounds. Tweadwell with eight big points last night in that overtime victory. He'll wear number 10. Jordan Perry, the big post player, the 6'3 senior, number 24, 12 points per game average and four boards for Perry. 10 wins, two losses, the Warriors from the Southland Conference and their opponent, no stranger to Crete Mani. Their partners in the Southland Conference, Coach Jasper Williams and his Bloom Township Trojans, led by the most talented and eclectic point guard, the 18 point average of Donald Moore Number three, the six-foot senior who had 11 points on Tuesday in the victory over Marion Catholic and 10 last night against Rich South. The two guard will be Lejavius Johnson, 24-point average for the shooter, 11 rebounds, the 6'2 senior, number 24. The three guard will be Henry Hicks, 6'2", junior, number 22. Hicks averaging 11 points a ball game. In the four spot at the forward, eight points a ball game, 10 rebounds. The 6'4", senior, number 15, Johnny Griffin. And the post, Jeteran Dejaro, the 6'5", senior, wears number 12 and averages 10 rebounds per ball game and nine points. I'm Jimmy Dragna, I am the Zesty Italian, and I am so pleased to be here, and I am glad you are here with us. HighSchoolCube.com, looking forward to an exciting ball game. We had a thriller last night, and I'll say it again, Crete Mani and previously undefeated Seton Academy went to overtime before the one-point thriller could end, and it was Crete Mani with a 67-66 victory to get to this ball game for the tournament trophy in the 39th annual. Coach Trey, we got Ronald McDonald down there. What's your thoughts on the whole story? Well, two good teams going for the championship. Both deserve to be here. Uh, one team undefeated. It's going to be a battle down to the wire. We want to say a shout out. When we talk about Mac, we can't forget about Mac Irvin. Well, I want to say a tribute and salute to Mac and his family. Uh, he passed on uh, well, Christmas Eve. I've been knowing Mac Irvin since I was 14 years old. Uh, we called him Pie then. He had a sweet jump shot. He was an older man in, in, in Washington Park where I played as a child. I've known him over the years. All of his sons played for me. Uh, Lance, Byron, Mike, Nick, great guys, all of them. And uh, uh, my condolences are with you. 74 years young. Shout out to the family as well as his wonderful mother Louise. I mean his wife Louise. 
and uh, our prayers are with the family. And yeah, uh, beautiful people, man. I've been knowing them a long time. Played at Tilden Technical High School back in the day. They played at Tilden. Uh, Nick Cladis, Johnny Red Kerr right after that era. Uh, Joe Buckalder. Uh, you know, Pat, he had a great jump shot and a beautiful guy. I coached his son at South Shore, McLaughlin Irvin. And Byron, when he was uh, played at Arkansas, went to the Portland Trail Blazers. Like I say, the basketball family, and uh, to be proud of him. Shot off the glass, won't fall. The putback, unsuccessful for Johnson. Back down the other way. And the foul and the bucket. They charge the foul on Michael Orris. First foul of the ball game, and Johnny Griffin with a chance for the three-point play for Bloom Township, and he's nothing but net. First blood belongs to the Trojans. Officials for tonight's game, Jim Sullivan, Mike Scrabis, and Obaseki Chemunju. Yeah, just call him Shea. Don't worry I know, about Don't worry but about I have to go with the name at great, the first great intro. Great crew tonight. Great crew it tonight is. for the championship. Or is controlling out on the perimeter from right to left. It's Crete Mani in their home unis. White trimmed in blue piping. And gold numerals and names. Solid blue in the center. Jumper from the left side off the mark. That was taken by Marvy Keith. Back down the other way, it's the other point guard. Keith to get the bucket. First basket of the ball game for Crete Money, and it belongs to the 5'11 junior Keith. Three to two, the advantage for Bloom. Down underneath, center of the lane, not much defense, and an easy peasy shot there for Jeteran DeJaro. 5-2, Bloom on top. Keith passing off for Money out on the perimeter. Now Orris to Treadwell. Loose ball into the hands of Moore. And there's another steal back the other way, courtesy of Perry. And strong in the lane. Keith passing off. There'll be a foul call as Jordan Perry will head to the line. The 6'3 senior for a couple. They charge the personal foul on, on Henry Hicks of Bloom. Two shot opportunity. Perry off the mark with the first shot. Again, an all Southland Conference final here at the 39th annual McDipper tournament as Perry the senior center gets one out of two, and it draws his teammates and Crete Money back to within a basket. 5.30 of the first quarter of play. In the corner, it's Griffin. He'll kick it back out on a perimeter. Now at the free throw line, DeJaro. And there's a steal for Orris. The Illinois recruit gets possession for Crete Money. Wrong three on the outside. Nothing but net for Marius Hopkins. First three ball of the ball game belongs to the Warriors. And they come up and take the lead for the first time, six to five at the five minute mark. And almost a steal there. Jay Menju with the call. Ball will stay in the hands of Bloom. Donald Moore left to the arc. He'll fill it up for three. 18 point average for the six foot senior point guard. And his first basket is a trifecta. Eight to six advantage for Bloom. You're listening to HighSchoolCube.com. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year from everyone at High School Cube as that jumper is off the mark from behind the arc by Marvy Keith. Back down the other way comes Bloom, little runner in the lane from about 14 feet out. Give the basket to Lejavius Johnson. 
for the bucket. Right side cannot convert the misfire and back comes Bloom in a hurry and there'll be a blocking foul charged against Crete Money. Ending up with his back in the lane is Marius Hopkins. So team two team fouls now on Crete Money. At the free throw line. In strong was Griffin, but no luck with the offering. Off the mark, and so back the other way, Keith. The electric point guard. Out to Oris on a wing. Oris on a drive. Draws the double. Now to Keith for three. Looks good, and it is good. Five points early on for Keith. Ten to nine advantage right now. Belonging to Bloom. Only by one long three from the other side. And it's all net. Team's trading three-pointers. It's going to be Lejavius Johnson. The shooters are out tonight, coach. They're red hot. The crowd is getting them fired up. And uh, it's going to be a barn burner. Out on the perimeter, controlling are the Warriors. They try to go down inside and they find Perry, but Perry can't get the first shot to fall. Loose ball rebound in and out of the hands of Hopkins. Back down the other way comes Bloom, but there's a loose ball. Perry's got it. Tries to find Oris underneath. Instead, Perry misfires with a bad looking shot there off balance. Back for three more. Off the mark, battle underneath. And there'll be a reach in foul. And we'll, we'll see. I'm sort of surprised Bloom is playing like this. Uh, their defense is, I've seen the two or three missed assignments and then a long three off the fast break. It was a three on one break. He had a man open on the right hand side and didn't pass the ball. So we'll see. Uh, it's probably jitters. Personal foul goes on Laquan Treadwell, who on the football field was an all state wide receiver last year for Crete Money. And he's just a junior? Just a junior. Yeah, good, good ball player. DeJaro at the line. Gets them both. Four points in the early going for Jeteran DeJaro. I'm sorry, check that one. He missed one of those shots. It's a five yeah, he missed one. point advantage for Bloom. 14 to 9. Uh, they made a defensive sub and they got a tracker, tracker on the little guard, Marquis. They called a foul. He was sent in specifically to do a defensive dive. Jawan Freeman, it's obvious he was sent in there just to dog him. Uh, we shall see. They charged that personal on Henry Hicks. And Freeman is up on him now. Bloom over playing. Up ahead quickly to the hole off the window and in for Deshaun Freeman as you call it coach just he, into the ball he's game he's in there just to go on Marquis that's obvious uh, Jasper Williams is a heck of a defensive coach timeout on the floor taken by Crete Money and coach Tom Kappel the lead 16 to 9 the seven point spread the largest so far Mark Connor was just in the ball game and we can't forget him last night 19 points off the bench for the 6'4 junior. And we'll see if he can make his presence known the way he did last night. This is Bloom's 15th appearance in the Final Four in this tournament. That's pretty good. Pretty good. The last time they won it was in 1995, so they're due. Yeah, talking with, with Mark... Hopman, the tournament director prior to the ball game. And the three most the three most appearances, of course, Rich South, the whole school. Bloom and Crete Money, the other two. A miss down on the other end of the floor. Crete cannot afford to miss easy baskets like that. But Bloom can play some defense. If they get a lead, they're up by seven now. Donald Moore passing out on a wing to Johnson. 
Johnson starts to penetrate, passes off, but there'll be a foul right into the hands of Connor. He was off to the races, but they're going to whistle that block against Crete Monique and Michael Orris. Second personal on Orris. He can't afford to put Orris on the bench, but there he goes. He is he's going, you're right. He's an intangible for them. He does so much on the floor. He frees up Marquis a lot. That's, that's his job. 11-point average, but not to mention the assists and the rebounds. Exactly. He's good for five assists a game. Exactly. And does so many different things. Also checking out for Bloom is Jeteran DeJaro. A lot of nervous is out there. A ball just dropped through Mark Connor's arms, and, and he should have hang on, hung on to it. He didn't, but luckily he gets the, his team gets it back. The drive on the right side of the baseline and the power jam gets the crowd excited. Credit it to Zarell Jackson, the sophomore who just checked into the ball game for Coach Jasper Williams. Five point lead, 16 to 11. Four. That was check Treadwell. That. I'm sorry, that was Treadwell that was with the slam. Player showing his athletic prowess. Down the other way, across the baseline. No, still in on the court. Great pass. And off down the glass there. and in there. Great Count pass. the mask. Great pass by Freeman. And Nyree Mitchell, who just checked in. I was identifying him as Jackson. It was Jackson. crowded in there, Jimmy. Could have been three seconds. It was crowded. There was at least six players in the center of the lane. Looked like a gang fight. They're letting them play. They are. So Nyree Mitchell with a three-point possibility here, and he'll get it with the foul shot. 19 to 11, an eight-point Bloom Township lead. Final 33 seconds of the first. Keith controlling out near half court. He'll pass it out on a wing to Hopkins. Hopkins starts to drive cross court to Morris, who just checked in there. Morris hits the three-pointer. The 5'8 senior with his first basket of the ball game. That's Crete's answer for Horace being on the bench. They need somebody to fill it up. Four seconds, Jimmy. Moore's got to hurry. He'll pull up for three. No. We've played through the first quarter of basketball. Took too many dribbles. From Rich South High School. The home of the third place champion this year in the McDipper Classic. As Rich South just recently defeated Seton a few moments ago for third. It is Crete Money on the short end of it. Coach Jasper Williams and his Bloon Township Trojans on top by a score of 19 to 14 over Crete Money. Uncle John's Barbecue Ribs located at 5103 Salk Trail in Richton Park directly across the street from Rich South High School is a proud sponsor of the Rich South McDipper High School Basketball Tournament. To receive a free dessert or appetizer with your next purchase, text BARBECUE, B-B-Q-U-E, to 72727. Feel free to visit us at any time you're in the area or order online at UncleJohnsBarbecue.com. We have great specials. Could you put that order in for me, Earl? Because I'm about uh, ready to start chewing up yeah, my newspaper yeah, here. Right we, now. Need, we need to get this done. Got to have some beef ribs, Jimmy. Beef ribs. Coach Stoner and myself are both ordering up right now. Nineteen to fourteen. After one period, Bloom Township with the advantage. Crete Money opens up the second quarter with the basketball. It's the exciting Marby Keith out near half court running the offense for Coach Tom Capel. Well, it's said in a half pick and roll. It seemed to work then, but. A screen by Perry as Keith drives the lane, and there'll be a reach in foul. Yeah. That's yeah. Jim Sullivan, the IHSA official, to call it, and it's going against. Lejavius Johnson, Johnson's first personal, and Marvy Keith, a 68% foul shooter, averaging 13 a game and eight assists. First trip to the line 
First point of the ball game in the second frame belongs to Keith at the line. And Crete Mani with a chance for a couple the easy way. And the point guard gets him. It draws the Warriors to within a three ball, 19 to 16. And they close the gap without Oris. With Oris on the bench, Bloom has not pulled away. That could be interesting later. Bounce pass left side, strong baseline, less move for Griffin. He'll kick it back out. And looking like he was getting away with something there, perhaps a walk, was Johnson down inside. And it kicks off the yard and falls through for Deshaun Freeman. Freeman is tricky, Jimmy. He is. He's very deceptive. Put up a left-hander soft shot. The last time he passed it for a great assist. Freeman, an excellent player at the guard spot off the bench for Jasper Williams. And he's guarding the most explosive man on the floor right now. Top of the circle. Treadwell. Nowhere to go on the dribble drive. He kicks it back to Keith. Too many dribbles, Jimmy. Three seconds. They go high post to Perry. Back out on the perimeter. Treadwell for three. Just get it off. Just the got off. it off in time, but it's off the mark. Back to the other way is Moore. And then off the foot of a defender. Call the foul. Call on Treadwell. My on Treadwell. Goodness. So Treadwell picks up number two. And the. That was a tic tac foul, Jimmy. Nobody's going to call that. Third. Horrible. Team foul, and everybody around here nods in agreement. I, I didn't even see the contact, to be honest with it you. It was contact, but it was not the kind of contact where you call a foul. It's called incidental contact. Moore out he, on a perimeter. He was trying to get the basketball. Nyree Mitchell still on the floor. Three on the way left of the arc. Off the mark by Johnson. Nobody home but white jerseys for the board. Keith back the other way, directing traffic. Near half court, looking down inside. He'll get the drive, lose the basketball, and they're gonna call another foul. Well, he was fouled. I mean, as soon as he went in there, somebody touched him. But it what I'm surprised at is that Perry. he doesn't drive and kick. He wants people to throw him a pass so he can shoot a three. He should be penetrating like Warris and then kicking out to the shooter. The young man that just hit a shot, uh, number 11, I think it is. He just hit a long one. Yeah, that was uh, T.J. Morris. Yeah, give it back to him. And right now, you're freezing him out. Yeah, sign of a he, good he, point guard is could, an unselfish player. He could be hot. Well, this guy is a shooter. He's not a point, that's for sure. Perry, now to Keith. Great ball handler and wants to shoot now. Keith guarded closely by Freeman. And a travel call. These referees have taken the game over. It's either going to be a foul or traveling. And well, that's what we're seeing right now. Che has really been on the hot end of the whistle lately, that's for certain. Yeah, he's an aggressive referee, that's for sure. <laughs> Jordan Perry called for the walk. Back the other way comes Bloom. 21-16, five-point lead, 5-19 of the second. Moore. Now, high post left side of the Great lane. Great passing by Bloom. Great Long passing. three from outside, off the mark by Freeman, and then across the now baseline. Now that was a foul. And they are going to call this. What? Oh, I missed it. I thought 34 white side. foul. 34 white was with, was the foul. They're going to call. 34 white committed the foul. Calling the referees on. are confused. 34 white foul on the back. And whatever call they got, we don't know. You're right. That would have been on Connor, no doubt. It's got to be. They've got nothing on the board like yet. Like we said, they're a little bit too aggressive down there for the referee situation. 34 White committed that foul. So they call it on Mark Connor, his first personal and the seventh team foul. Check that, the seventh team foul on Bloom, I mean on Crete Mani. I'm getting confused now. Nyree Mitchell at the line for a couple. He hits the front end. Well, they both got blue gold. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it is different. Two at the line for Mitchell. <laughs> He improves the five points in the first half. And the lead, seven now for Bloom. Lazy pass by Marquis Keith. Right side of the lane, off the glass, and in. Give the bucket to Jordan Perry. Good interior pass by Treadwell. 
He fouled him and he got to him. And they need that. Cross court. Moore. Top of the circle. Back to Johnson. Boom is, does an excellent job in half court basketball. They, they, pass they create. They, they do. They yeah. create openings and look for the spots. Yeah. Patience a high, high screen and, roll. and smart. On a drive. Moore with the runner. No. Loose ball, rebound, center of the lane. There's a steal and by Moore. Almost a steal, and it is right into the hands of Freeman. Back the other way. Hicks off the glass. No, but the putback will go in for Henry Hicks on his own shot. Boom is out hustling Crete right now. Moore stole the pass. Freeman fell on the floor and, and gobbled it up. Right, he was on his back when he got the steal. He was in right spot, right time. 25-18, seven-point lead for the undefeated Bloon Township Trojans. Another screen and roll, but no pass. They keep dribbling the ball. Keith. He drives driving. in there. He's looking for and five travels. every time. He didn't get it. So the walk gives the ball back to Bloom. Something that Crete Monique cannot afford to do too many times tonight because Bloom will bury you. Hicks out on the perimeter between he and Moore. Left side of the floor, they bounce it once inside to Freeman. Freeman loses the ball, almost a jump, and then somehow coming in there to get it out. On his back was Keith, and then a whistle and a foul call. This will go against Bloom and Henry Hicks. Check it, no, they're gonna call on Freeman. I don't think they want him in foul trouble. Jim Sullivan with the whistle, the official at the scene. And Keith will bring it across half court uncharacteristically with a walk. Usually hard to see that young man slow down. 3.06 of the second. Seven point lead. Crete Money needs to convert here. Strong in the lane shot will not fall by Treadwell, but the putback will go for the Football player, the All-State wide receiver. By Treadwell. Great Power answer. forward, Treadwell gets his own rebound and puts it in. Back to a five-point deficit are the Warriors. Bloom with the basketball. Moore out on a perimeter between he and Freeman. Now they go the other way to Hicks. Hicks pulls up with the 15-footer. It's short. Nothing but white jerseys around for the rebound. Perry ahead to Keith. And Keith goes strong inside, and as you said, Coach, he doesn't like to pass off, and he traveled again. Uh, that's a pattern move he has, and Roche is not going to give it to him. He's trying to get a foul, though. He has to throw his body into the man, but like I said before, he should drive and kick it back out to the free man, and, you know, you got something going. I think he's had three or four violations now. Bloom with the basketball. Left side of the floor, controlling is Jackson, who just checked in. Zarell Jackson, the 5'9 sophomore. Baseline left, nowhere to go. Griffin then decides to go down on the baseline. He'll pass it off to DeJaro, and DeJaro puts it in off the window. The assist to Johnson, the basket to DeJaro. 27 to 20, back to a seven point lead comes Bloom. Under two minutes to go before intermission. Treadwell, top of the circle of Keith. At the foul stripe, Perry, turnaround jumper. Left side of the floor, good for two. Good patience by Crete. And they haven't been showing that a lot. Nice, soft shot, medium range. I think they need to do that the rest of the game. Five points for Perry, and the lead for Bloom is also five and that one deflected but the hustle to get it back is jackson he'll start a drive pass off on a bounce baseline left to griffin and then griffin passes off to dejaro and a foul call underneath the ooze in the eyes of the crowd in the background a oh, good hard foul no problem it was in the front he wasn't trying to hurt him but he's trying to send him a message and both players shook hands afterwards that's how you play ball they whistle it on T.J. Morris. 
Eighth team foul on Treat Mani as Jeteran DeJaro, the 6'5 senior. Nine points a ball game for DeJaro for the other night in their victory over Rich South on Thursday. Both at the line, back to a seven point lead. Once more is Bloom. Down to the final minute of the first half, 29-22. Jasper Williams and his Trojans with the cushion. Keith, out left side of the floor. This and guy will driving not the pass. lane with he the runner, it won't the ball. fall. Loose ball, center of the lane, and there'll be a reach in. Are they gonna call jump or foul? One ref call foul, one call jump. Jim Sullivan goes over and talks with Scrabus, and they confer on the jump possession. Mark going Keith left to right. Must pass the rock, and he's not doing it. He's not. Very selfish in his first half. Well, I think with Oris on the guard. bench, I, I, don't, I don't think it's, he's selfish. Oris is on the bench. He's just trying to do too much. It's something about it. your basketball IQ has to take over eventually. Moore to Jackson. And Jackson almost tied up there and then a reach in foul, thinking they had to steal. A little too much intensity uh, by Mark Connor. Don't picks foul, up the second. Don't foul by Crete. Here's a guy off the bench. They got him in the trap. He's he's frustrated. He's floundering, and they foul him. You got to wait. You got to let he's, him give it up. Exactly. Be patient. One man stay there. The next man take the passing lane. You pick his pass off. So Zarell Jackson, the five nine sophomore reserve guard, at the line. Yeah, they, oh, yes. one end, and he won't get a second as he yes, misfires on the first. The technique was very unusual, Jimmy. I haven't seen the shaky leg before in a long time. Some shaky leg. That was, that was something else. Remind me of Kramer on Seinfeld. The Jimmy <laughs> He's legs. got the Jimmy's, the exactly. Jimmy leg. My goodness, what was that? 29-22. Can't get to sleep with somebody in the bed like that. Incredible. Long three from Big outside. Shot. Ooh, Nothing. won't fall. And that's it. We've played through halftime. Yeah. T.J. Morris's shot from outside won't fall. But if and he had still, had the ball earlier, that shot would have went in. 29-22 at the half. The lead belongs to Jasper Williams and his Bloom Township Trojans. We are at halftime for the championship of the 39th McDipper Classic from Richton Park and Rich South High School. And it is Treat Money trailing. 29-22. You'll see highschoolcube.com. Stick around. We'll be back with all of the second half and the tournament trophy presentation thereafter. You're listening to HighSchoolCube.com for all your holiday basketball needs across the land of Lincoln and on the internet globally. Uncle John's Barbecue Ribs located at 5103 Salt Trail in Rich Jim Park directly across the street from Rich South High School is a proud sponsor of the Rich South McDipper High School Basketball Tournament. To receive a free dessert or appetizer with your next purchase, text barbecue BBQUE to 72727. Feel free to visit us at any time you're in the area or order online at www.unclejohnsbarbecue.com. We have great specials.
Welcome back to HighSchoolCube.com. Halftime score, 29-22 for the championship. The lead belonging to Bloom Township over Crete Money. Bloom being led by the, well, a balanced attack, really. Three players with five points. Nyree Mitchell off the bench. Henry Hicks with five. With Javius Johnson with five. Two players with four each. Deshaun Freeman and Jatera DeJaro. Donald Moore with a three-pointer. Johnny Griffin with a three-pointer the old-fashioned way with one at the line. And that rounds out the 29 as going to work with the basketball. And good to see him back on the floor for Crete Money is Michael Orris. Yeah, the senior bound for U of I. Seven points for Marvy Keith to lead the way for Crete Money with seven. Five for Jordan Perry. Four for Laquan Treadwell. And three each for Marvius Hopkins and TJ Morris. Morris is coming by the three ball, as was Marius Hopkins. Possession goes back to Bloom. A bad communication there on the turnover by Orris. He hadn't been out there in a while and missed At his the man right stripe, on the jumper. Moore can't get it to fall. Big defensive glass for Treadwell. As you said, Coach, before, very athletic. He is all over. Good athlete. Cross court to Orris for a three. There's a big shot. He's ooh, off the mark. He's been sitting on the bench a long time, Jimmy. Put back in the follow will not drop for Hopkins. And then the big rebound defensively baseline left for DeJaro. And Bloom comes back the other way. Glad you're with us for HighSchoolCube.com. The 39th annual McDipper Classic. It's all for the big trophy right now. And this one won't drop by Moore. Battle down underneath. Almost looked like a jump there. Last touched by a Warrior. Jay Menju, the IHSA official there with the call. And so Bloom will keep it. Inbound quickly, Johnson out on the perimeter to Moore. Right side of the floor, they work it now into the hands of Lejavius Johnson. He starts to drive, bounces over to Moore for three. Left perimeter, nothing but net for the six-foot senior, Moore. Second three-pointer of the ball game. And a nine-point lead now for the undefeated 12-0 Trojans. Trying to take control here in the third quarter and ice this one away early. Keith down inside, intercepted on the baseline by Hicks for the steal. Moore down the other way, wide open for Johnson for three. Write it down. But Javius Johnson ripples the cord from behind the arc on the right side of the floor and quickly Tom Kappel with the timeout for Crete Money. 6.05, barely two minutes gone in the third, and it's a double-figure lead for Bloom, 35-22. Donald Moore is using his teammates. Crete has to use theirs. Wide open man, received a pass, he hits the jump shot. Uh, Crete takes two or three extra dribbles, they throw a pass, it's either picked off or deflected, and they can't get their offense started. The Warriors without a basket in this third quarter in the opening two minutes. And two big three balls, Donald Moore and Lejavius Johnson. Senior leadership on Jasper Williams Ball Club. The veteran coach, the NIU graduate, nine years at the helm. Has his team undefeated in 2011 and would like to finish off the calendar year with a 13-0 mark and think about conference schedule in the Southland going in January. Well, one of the referees was just talking to Oris. I guess he's trying to sell his nerves down by 13. We're going to see what the Illinois recruit is made of right here. He sat down the majority of the first half. Largest lead of the ball game right now. Off the glass and in. Nice move on the right side of the baseline for Laquan Treadwell. Fifth and six points of the game for Treadwell. More importantly, the first basket in this third quarter for the Warriors. 5.37, third period. That's Hicks passing off to Moore out on the far side of the floor. He'll spin off the defender, Hopkins. Go right by him like he's not there. Hopkins looks like he reached and committed the foul, got more arm than ball. But Moore gets it back regardless. He is so smooth. Low dribble between the legs about four times. Moore pulls up for the jumper, write it down. Left side of the arc. Donald Moore once more, two for two.
from behind the With arc. The high screen and roll. Moore was able to get open, get free, get some space. An easy basket for him after he dribbled for like 13 seconds. Foul on the other end against Johnson. Second personal for Lajavius. Hopkins was chasing him around, but he knew he couldn't guard him. Crete has to come up with some baskets and then some hustle on defense. Down 14. 14 is right. The largest lead of the ball game for Bloom. Threatening to balloon and push the Warriors of Crete Money out of the gym here at Ridge South. And this one last touch by the defender for the Trojans. And that was Johnson, far side of the floor, down on the Bloom end. 39th annual McDipper Classic. Ronald McDonald still in the house, shaking hands. The jumper won't fall from the right side, just inside the arc. That was Perry, and then down the other way for three. That's Moore off of the front of the rim. Rebound for Hopkins. He pushes it up ahead to Orris, and almost losing the ball was Marvy Keith. Now Orris on a drive with the right hand. Looked like that was partially deflected. And Donald Moore grabs the ball and goes two rows into the stands. They called a timeout. He Great hustle did. by Bloom. Wow, Great that was amazing. One of his teammates called the timeout as he was in the air. And that's what you get with teamwork and the athleticism of a point guard like Donald Moore. Goodness gracious, that team plays well together. 418 of the third. 38-14, 14 point lead right now for the undefeated Bloon Township Trojans trying to take home the coveted McDipper Holiday Tournament Championship Trophy. Jimmy Dragon alongside Earl Young. We've been here for all four days and we've had our extra special guest, Coach Trey Johnson with us. And Coach, I really want to say thanks again and Happy New Year for all the work you've been with us here today, and uh, so good to sit with you. Thanks a lot, Jimmy, but this is Tree Stoner, and let me say this, Jimmy, this was like a Christmas present with you and Earl this week. It was outstanding. I uh, had a lot of fun, and I learned an awful lot about broadcasting. Trust me. I really, really value, and I appreciate what you and Earl are doing. Uh, it's, it's not an easy job. Trust me. Well, appreciate the good words, Coach. Thank you. Moore's jumper won't fall, and it'll be all kinds of banging inside the lane, and I think the foul call is going to get charged against Bloom, and specifically Johnny Griffin. It'll be the first personal on Griffin, the forward. And again, the U of I recruit, Orris, to bring it up across half court right now. As we see Marby Keith, of course, at the two spot. He's running the baseline, looking for an opening. He'll take the three. From outside, high off the arc, big rebound in and out of the hands of Hopkins. Moore's got it. He's going strong to the hole with the runner. No. Loose ball battle bouncing around like a pinball. And underneath it's Moore. Right spot, right time. Off the window for two. Donald Moore. Eight points coming in the third quarter. 11 in the ball game. Double figures for the point guard. Number three, Moore. The Bloom defense has picked up a notch. They're playing a strict man-to-man -man with no switching. You, you keep your man. You go through the pick. That's how you're taught in college how to play, believe me. I think we have a foul down on the baseline between Orris and the contact there with Henry Hicks. Creed is very one-dimensional, Jimmy, very one-dimensional. Uh, there's some blood on the jersey of, I think, Hopkins. He's got to lead the game. They charge it on DeJaro. First personal on the post player for Bloom. And quickly, as you said, Freeman. Check that. You're right. Hopkins heading to the locker to get taken care of there medically. Strong inside going between the trees but missing the layup after he had a nice trip in is Keith. Keith with a follow shot. Can't go. Loose ball battle again to run it down. Treadwell. Here they goes Treadwell. Strong the inside. <laughs> They've had three chances to reset the clock. They get the rebound and they drive back in and make another mistake. Treadwell on the drive and the foul draws the cat calls and it's DeJaro's second. Well, he was fouled. 
I don't see what they're booing the about. Crowd, they don't know the nuances of basketball. They have no idea what's going on. I, of course, I, they want their team to win. I agree, of Nothing course. Wrong with that. Homers. They're homers. Treadwell, first trip to the line for the athletic 6'3 junior forward. Nice touch over the front of the rim. Drops through. He proves to eight points in the ball game. And back to within 14 now are the Warriors of Crete Money. 245 of the third. Double figure lead since before the first couple minutes of this third quarter. It was a seven point lead at half, but Donald Moore came out along with Johnson and buried a couple of three balls. And it's been double figures ever since about the six minute mark. And a tough team to come back against is Bloom Township. And this one Looking for a whistle and a foul. Instead, it goes out of bounds almost in front of Coach Williams of Bloom Township. So possession goes back. Last touch by the Trojans to the Warriors of Crete and Manee. Orris to Keith in the backcourt. And Marvy Keith brings it across with the right-handed dribble at a walk. And almost a steal there by Griffin. But then out of bounds, last touch by him, right in front of Tom Kappel. The first-year coach for the Warriors at Crete Money. He has a championship ring back when he coached at Hillcrest back at the end of the 90s. Bounce pass right through the legs of Orris, but saving the day is Keith. And Keith will pass off now to Connor. Connor decides, I won't shoot from the corner. And now it's Hopkins for three, and he's got it. The three guard, Marius Hopkins, from behind the arc, far side of the floor, almost at the baseline. His second three-pointer of the ball game. He had one to open things up, the second shot. And we'll have time taken on the floor by Mike Strabus to, as he offers, he take, gives the timeout due to the fact that we have the are well, they aware that the net is uh, wrapped up on the iron? Orris and Keith in the backcourt. The three guard Hopkins for Crete Money. And Mark Connor, the super sub, out there along with LaCron Treadwell. And another foul They're call. They're calling it tight now. It's going to. They're going to make this a ball game one way or the other. Either Crete shows some fortitude to try to make some baskets. I think Keith, he needs a bucket. If he gets a bucket, it's going to heat up. They charge the foul on Johnny Griffin, his second. Loose ball underneath and rejected. Good defense by Freeman down on the blocks, swatting that Carlos shot away. Not showing up tonight. They need his points, his rebounds from last night and not getting the production. Oh, you're right. Connor with a big night yesterday. 19 he has points. Zero points tonight. Turnaround push shot. Nice little look there by Marius Hopkins. They better go to Hopkins. He's got the hot hand right the now. 40 to 31 brings the Bloom lead down to single figures. Moore now to Hicks. Back to Moore. Griffin now top of the circle. DeJaro. Top of the ring. Henry Hicks between the legs dribble. Almost a steal for Orris. Now Moore on a drive. And there'll be a reach and foul. And this will go against Marius Hopkins of Crete Money. So set the inbound to the right of the Warrior basket. I think Hopkins is tired. That was his third foul. They're running him around. And he just hit the last couple of shots for Creek. But he seems tired right now. Hicks pushes it out on the baseline. And now Freeman, top of the circle, Boom, back to Hicks. Now to pass. Hicks again. Freeman for three. Nowhere. 
off the iron, high in the air for the rebound, Treadwell. And Treadwell with five defensive rebounds in this ball game. He's been all over the glass for Crete Mani. Orris now goes to Treadwell down in the corner, and he doesn't want the ball. That's Connor right now. Three long ball from outside off the mark by Treadwell. Creed, Creed is out and of that sync. is it for the period. We've sync. got one more eight minute quarter remaining and it is a 41 to 30 advantage. Nine point lead for Bloom Township. Eight minutes away from capturing the tournament trophy for the 39th annual McDipper Holiday Tournament at Rich South High School in Richland Park. You're listening to HighSchoolCube.com we're the proud provider of athletics and events at the high school level across the globe on the internet landscape. Go to highschoolcube.com backslash get started to find out how you can start broadcasting for your school today. Other scores today from the McDipper. And we've been here all day. We can tell you about it. It was Leo High School winning 77 to 52 and also Evanston 59 to 48 over Rich Central other games today Seton Academy going down to defeat for the second time <coughs> by a score of 70 to 62 as Rich South the whole school took the third place trophy congratulations to Scott Ritter and of course his athletic director who is also the tournament director here for this fine fine holiday tournament from December 26th to the 30th that would be Mark Hopman also shout out there to Nancy Aducci his assistant director who has also done a measurable job here and energetic and hard work to keep this tournament a success. Down inside, the shot won't fall for Bloom, but Griffin with a follow, he'll pass off. And unlike, unsuccessful with the putback is Mitchell, but he'll go to the line for a couple. Nyree Mitchell, the senior forward. They charge the personal foul on Treadwell. It'll be his third. Big foul shots down the stretch. And Bloom, we've seen it before, Coach, don't make their shots. Creed has to come up with those balls. They cannot afford to give up balls and then foul, and then for Bloom to hit free throws. Coach Kappel calls the timeout. Nyree Mitchell with the first points in the final period of play, and they're both at the foul stripe. It gives his team back a double-figure lead, 42-31. You know, Coach Campbell hasn't been to the dip in a while. Jasper Williams has been coaching. Uh, they took a third in uh, 2004. I think they took a second in 2007. So um, Coach Williams wants his bad, I'm pretty sure. And I, I, I'm pretty sure when they come out, Bloom is going to work that clock on every possession. The creep should be coming out here trying to get some quick baskets. I counted nine dribbles by one player, Marquis, last time. He's got to get that ball up quicker, get to the spot, and then get a shot off. Yeah, you were right earlier, Coach, when you said in that first half uh, a lot of unsuccessful possessions when I think Marvy Keith was maybe in error to call him himself, was trying to do too much with Oris yeah, on the bench. I think Oris should have the ball and get Keith open. Now well, there you go. Oris There's Oris for three. three. There you go. Curbside profit, Coach, you they, are. They must do that to stay in this ball game. Oris has to have his hand on the basketball. So Oris puts his name in the scorebook for the first time tonight. Bruce Weber's not signed in for nothing, buddy. 42-34, eight-point lead now. Cut off the double-figure lead. Moore out on a perimeter. They just left the most dangerous man on the floor for Bloom. Donald Moore by himself. He missed him. And them. Moore misses there, luckily, for Creepman. He back the other way is Keith. He tries to pass down on the baseline. Good defense to Jimmy, prevent that, that basket. Jimmy, that one extra dribble helped the defensive man get over there. He's got to pull the dribble up quicker and, and fire the pass quicker. Don't dribble. Pass. Nyree Mitchell with a quick hand to bat that across the baseline, preventing the transition trip for the Warriors. Back with the inbound. Treadwell, top of the ring. 
They're looking for Oris and He'll can't go find to him. Oris, and Oris with a little screen. Doesn't want top of the circle action. He'll give it back to Keith. Now Oris out on a wing. We'll see if they find him. Down strong inside. Treadwell. Oh, what a move. Laquan Treadwell. That ball hung on the rim forever. And finally circular and fell through. Double figures now. Ten points for Laquan Treadwell, the All-State wide receiver. Now if Mark Connor would join the party, Crete would be in the mix. 42 36, six point lead, and there's going to be another ticky tack foul well, that there. That was a foul, Jim. The man was off his feet. He fouled him going in the act of shooting. I don't know if they're going to give him a shot or not. Out of bounds. Not in the act of shooting, but at Treadwell, more importantly, that coach, that's foul. number four. Inbounds. Bloom with the basketball. Johnson with the dribble. He gives it to Freeman, streaking towards. Oh, there's the steal. Keith back down the other way. Go strong in the lane with the runner. No. He had to force the issue. He should have waited. Too much, too soon, too quick. You got Hopkins is hot. Oras is hot. Treadwell wants the ball, and you keep it and shoot it. No way. You had a four-point game if you could convert it. You just had to be patient and look for yeah. the right people. I admire his aggressiveness, but he's got to learn to go to the hot man. You got it right, coach. Moore. Passing off to Johnson. There's another steal. Now goes up ahead this time to Perry. Mark no check that. Mark Connor finally gets his first ball in the ball game. A party. Look out. 524 of the final quarter. It's a four-point game. 42-38. It's starting to heat up the drama building. Down inside. A foul and one. Johnny Griffin off the glass and in for the bucket. The 6'4 senior forward on the baseline left using the window and a reach in foul charged against. Donald Moore is doing what Marquis Keith should be doing. He's finding the open man down low, pulling the defense to him. Marius it Hopkins for his fourth. Two players now in the starting lineup for Coach Kappel with four Hopkins and Treadwell. Putting the punctuation mark on the play is Johnny Griffin for Bloom. 45-38. Back to an eight-point advantage for the Trojans. Down to the five-minute mark. Oris, timeout taken by Crete Monique with just 5.04 remaining in the ballgame. Again, we wanted to remind you here, the McDipper, only the tip of the iceberg for High School Cube. We are also in DuPage County at Hinsdale South. Providence, Eisenhower, Schaumburg, and Media Valley among the teams out there. Also, at the Proviso West Holiday Tournament, where the battle for that championship should be being waged right now between Proviso East and New Trier. Morgan Park and Auburn from Rockford battling for third place trophy over there. That should already be finished. And of course, the other tournament down in Pontiac, Simeon taking home the hardware there. Beating Peoria Manuel by a point today, 48-47. Oris, after the timeout, Almost a walk there. That's Perry. Now for three on the way. Connor off the mark. Doesn't draw iron. Loose ball rebound. Credited to Johnny Griffin. Big defensive glass for Griffin. Moore with the basketball. And I said it before on Thursday. I said my odds on favor would be Donald Moore as the tournament MVP. And it could very well come out to be oh, true. in this game. He's definitely the MVP. Top of the circle, Johnson. Running some clock, as you said, coach. Jasper Williams wants to see it down to five before they shoot. It's at four now. Long three by Moore. Off the mark. And there'll be a foul. Rebound. Off the ball. Are they calling that against? They are. Crete Money. T.J. Morris had to be the guilty party. Well, he was blocking out on the play. I didn't see... Uh it wasn't a vicious foul, let's put it like that. 
It was a simple block out. That ball was short. It barely hit the rim. Really away from, really away from the action, if you will, yeah, because they, it carried right back out were, the other way. They were way. going the other way. Bloom inbounds with a fresh shot. They shoot it anyway, center of the lane. Give the basket to Marius Hopkins, the senior three guard. No, that, that's Freeman, that's Freeman. Check that, Freeman. And almost a steal there. And the Bloom fans here wanting more and more and more as Griffin looked like he might have been on his way on a free trip to the hole. Creed but they, got lucky on that play. They whistle Griffin for the foul, his third. And so Michael Orris <laughs> at the line as a result of the seventh team foul for Bloom. Orris for two. And wow, what a soft touch on the rim there. That kicked around forever before falling through. Orris, all his points coming in the final period of basketball here. And the second one much cleaner. Five on the night for Orris. They're going to need more of that if they want to get back in it. That being Crete Manee. 340 left in the contest. Seven point lead for Bloom. Freeman out on a perimeter. Donald Moore top of the ring. Orris on the defensive side. Moore starting to drive, going strong and losing the basketball. And they call a block on Orris. He puts his hands on his hips and kind of just smiles. Well, I like Orris' attitude. He's not getting upset. He's not getting frustrated. But it didn't look like it could have been a foul. It looked like he hit the ball. So only the tapes will tell. You got to look at the replay on that. I thought he hit the ball. Exactly. And uh, if it had gone out of bounds, it would have gone back to Crete Mani. And instead now it's more to salt the wound as he puts his score in the fourth period right now for the first basket coming from the foul stripe. 11 points in the game for Donald Moore prior to this trip. And he'll get one out of two. There's an old saying, Jimmy, ball don't lie. And he didn't make both of them on that. He only got a half of that one, but what a call. Keith out on a perimeter. Pulling up for the jumper, left side of the foul stripe. Off the mark for Hopkins. And a rejection in the lane. Are they going to call a foul? They are. Well, everything near Che has been a foul tonight. And it goes. I thought that was an instant block. It looked I like to it me. Was, That's what we call it. Deshaun Freeman gets called for the foul. The second one and on that's Freeman. His four, is that his fourth foul? Look, I think he's got four, Jimmy. You're right, he does. But they look like they, they said it on 33 now. The, the scoreboard flashing. Who knows? So Orris is one out of two at the line. Three out of the last four for the Illinois recruit. Six points in the ball game for the 6'3 senior two guard. Seven point lead, running out of time, strong in the lane. No, but another foul call. And this time it will send. I don't know why they're double teaming down on Moore. He's found the open man there all night long. Every time. I don't get Nyree it. Nyree Mitchell I don't that get time. It. And Nyree Mitchell has been to the stripe three times and is five for five. The wrong guy to put at the line. And that's why they put it in his hand, Jimmy. They want the best free throw shooters on the game in the last two minutes. Yeah, it's definitely good coaching by Jasper Williams, no doubt. Perfect at the foul stripe, seven for seven to go along with the bucket at the beginning of the ball game in the first quarter for Mitchell. And another one high in the air for the boards, give it to Griffin defensively. Not the board, but I should say that the steal on the block, 50-41, nine point lead. Bloom trying to turn out the lights here. They can do it with a bucket to go to double figures. Griffin, perimeter left, now right side of the floor, Johnson. 
Running clock, Moore out near half court, shot at five. They're gonna have to hurry, gets a little bit of screen from Mitchell. And then losing the ball after getting it off of the misfire. Laquan Treadwell and across the baseline, new shot clock and only 2-0-4 They call left. that a coach killer. That's what they call that. Oh my, oh my. Nothing you can do about it. The ball bounces off a Creech player's foot out of bounds as they're going down for the fast break. Timeout on the floor. Taken by Coach Kappel and Crete Money. 2.04 remaining. A nine point lead. Bloom Township looking real good at going to 13 and 0 and capturing the 39th annual McDipper tournament trophy. They've led the whole game. And what's the odds of Creek coming back from nine down with 204 to go? But that's what that three point line's all about. We'll see. Well, you know, Coach, uh, we watched that game earlier between Rich South and Seton, and they seemed pretty flat after last night's overtime loss. And, you know, I think maybe a little bit of that may be carried over to Crete Money, even though they didn't win the ball game. That was an emotionally draining ball game. Well, you got a point there, Jimmy. And they came out sort of flat. I, I agree with you on that. No doubt about it. And, you know, you play back-to-back -back ball games like that and get victories, you'd almost have to be a little superhuman. But when you go down state, Jimmy, then it is oh, that's going to have to play. Thank you. That's what that's I was going to have to say. Now. That would be March basketball in December. Exactly. That's why we're doing it now. Yes, so sir. So you ready for this. Yes, sir. Quickly on the inbounds, off the glass. Mitchell can't convert. Still hope in the heartland for Crete Money. Strong driving left side. No. The basket won't fall for Crete Mani and Treadwell, but he'll be at the line for a couple. Double figures for Treadmill off his average of 12 by 2, but he can equal it right here if he can convert these two foul shots and more importantly bring his ball club to within 7. Smart foul by Nairi Mitchell. He wouldn't give him the layup and made sure he couldn't make it. Just give him the two-shot foul, but the coach is taking him out anyway. That was his first personal of the night. He's talking to him now. He may have wanted him just to shoot. If he missed, get the rebound. Don't stop the clock. I think that's what that's all about. Treadwell gets them both to improve to 12 points in the ball game. 50 to 43, under two minutes to go in regulation. Cross court, down into the front court comes Bloom and Freeman. Freeman almost lost control of the I ball. I think Bloom wants to use clock. No reason to force the issue here. I would make the Warriors foul me and put me at the line as Moore starts to drive, passing off to Freeman. And there is the travel what call. What happened, Jimmy? Before he jumped, he threw a, a pump fake twice, jumping in the air, and he traveled. He didn't keep his feet stationary. He, he, Jim Sullivan with moved, the whistle for the IHSA. Chance here to cut it to five or perhaps four with a tray. Strong, Marvin Keith in the lane. No, Treadwell high in the air for the follow and he'll get it. Timeout, Crete Money. Five point lead for Bloom with 109 remaining after the Treadwell basket. 50 to 45, Bloom on top, but it's gotten closer. Laquan Treadwell has kept Crete in this game by himself. Uh, Marquis Keith has only got seven points. He's missed many shots driving to the basket. He has an in three. He may have hit one earlier, but Treadwell has cleaned up a lot of his mistakes. Well, as you said earlier, Coach, he tried to do too much in the first half, and if perhaps he had not, a couple of those baskets could have worked. It would be an even ball game. Go ahead, Earl. Uncle John's Barbecue Ribs, located at 5103 Salt Trail in Richmond Park, directly across the street from where we're playing now in Rich South High School, is a proud sponsor of the Rich South McDipper High School Basketball Tournament. To receive a free dessert or appetizer with your next purchase, text BBQUE to 72727. Feel free to visit us at any time you're in the area or order online at UncleJohnsBarbecue.com. Have great specials. Third, third place game from 
Proviso West, Auburn of Rockford, a 20 plus point winner for third place over Morgan Park. That shot blocked back down the other way, Treadwell passing to Oris and he can't hang on to the basketball. Oh my goodness. Jimmy, that's what we're talking about. The missed opportunities, the running down the court, the ball bouncing past you onto the wall. Creed Got a chance just, to cut it to a three point Creed game. Has blown another and they throw it away. It's Hicks. Now to Johnson. Bloom controlling on the perimeter, and they're just going to kill this clock you now. Would think they will run clock. Oh, poke from behind by Hopkins, but they whistle the foul on Marius Hopkins when it looked well, like he may have just had all ball. No, there's a technique you use to punch the ball out. He didn't do it. It's a foul. He reached around him, and they Ma called it. Marius Hopkins is gone. 38 seconds remaining. Eight points in the ball game for the 6'4 senior three guard for Crete Monique. And he will leave for the last time tonight and his 5'8 senior, TJ Morris, who wears number 11, will come in for the Warriors. 38 seconds remaining, huge foul shots at the line right now. And rimming, there won't be a second as Johnson misses out there Three on the line for Keith, off the mark, and can't run it down. The Warriors and Morris, and out of bounds. That was a huge shot, and again, it is Marvy Keith trying to do a little too much, Coach. Well, he's been shooting all night and missing. He should have tried to receive a pass to shoot. He's dribbling, and he's taking himself out of it. All his points, seven were coming in the first half, and actually the only two baskets he had were in the first period early. He opened the game with a jumper and then a three, and he hasn't been heard from since except for two at the foul stripe and nothing in the second half. And Bloom yet, plays defense. Yes, they do. The crowd starting to head for the exits. 26 seconds left. It will take a miracle as Moore is at the line, and I said earlier, I guess maybe perhaps the MVP and Moore with the soft touch and the shooter's roll converts on his first foul shot. 51-45. The lead can go to seven. And it does. Nothing but net on the second offering. More three out of four in this final quarter at the line. Huge foul shots. And right now that is half of the lead thereabouts for Bloom. He doesn't make those three foul shots and we nearly have a one possession game, coach. Yeah, that's true. Creed gave it all they had, but they, they, they just never got into their basketball game, I don't think. Oris with the early foul trouble, and he looked confused after that when he went to the bench. Uh, the young man Morris hit a long shot. He never see the ball back to shoot again until time was running out at halftime. Uh, they didn't use the post enough, and they let Moore do what he wanted to do on offense, so that sums it up. You got to do something. You got to stop Moore. Or well, you got to play better offense, one or the other. Again, third place ball game. Sandberg defeats Brother Rice 65 to 64. And I was going to have to say that has to be at the Hinsdale South Tournament. And just, just coming in, the first place ball game, which I fail to be able to tell you who it is, is in double overtime. Wow. Was that Simeon and Warren? Um, no, Simeon already won that ball game oh, okay. with Peoria Manual by a point. They've already oh. captured the trophy. And okay. The three by Ort Riss will not go. Battle for the loose ball. Captured there by Morris. Morris' shot won't go. And then last touched on the baseline by the Warriors. Did you see that, Jimmy? Crete bounced the ball out of bounds. Connor had it in his possession, and he bounced it out. And that's the story of the game for Crete tonight. They had many plays like that. Eight minutes, eight seconds remaining. Down the other way. And holding on to it for the final seconds is Lejavius Johnson. And the party is underway. 52-45.
39th McDipper Tournament Trophy for the Holiday Rich South Richton Park Tournament goes to Bloom Township High School and Coach Jasper Williams Crew from the Southland Conference. We want to thank, as he just heads down to the floor for an interview, it was PTI Sports' Russell Bowie. Thank you so much, Russell, for all your support. We couldn't have done it without you, my friend. We're going to give you a recap here. We're HighSchoolCube.com, and the tournament championship, we have a winner, ladies and gentlemen, and the envelope goes to Bloom Township. 13 and 0 on the season. Four games, four wins. 70-47 Monday over Corliss. 56-47 over Marion Catholic on Tuesday. 69-51 yesterday over Rich South. And a seven-point victory tonight over Crete Money and Coach Tom Capel's Warriors for the tournament championship. 14 points, well, in a losing effort. Let's go to Crete Mani first. They went to 10 and three on the season, winning three out of four. They were led by the eight points of Marius Hopkins. Check that. The 14 points of Laquan Treadwell, who was strong in the second half, double digit scoring in the last two periods. He had four in the first half, all 10 coming in the second. Eight points for Marius Hopkins, who fouled out with 38 seconds remaining. Seven for Marvin Keith, the point guard, all coming in the first half. Wished he had a couple in the second half. It might have been a different story. Michael Orris, the Illini recruit, had six all in the final period. Five for Jordan Perry. A three ball for T.J. Morris and two for Mark Connor. Laquan Treadwell from Crete Monique being honored for an all-tournament selection. And there'll be a picture taken here as Treadwell holds the second place trophy. And Ronnie McDonald is in the front ground, if you will, the foreground. Congratulations to the Warriors of Crete Manee and Coach Tom Kappel in his first year, along with his assistant John Coleman. The ex-coach from Hillcrest High School, Tom Kappel, with second place and the hardware here for Crete Money, his Warriors. Bloom Township goes to 13-0. Jasper Williams and his ball club led by the 14 points of the talented point guard, the six-foot senior Donald Moore with 14. Pictures being taken as the jubilant Trojan ball club almost climbing on top of each other. Eight points for Lejavius Johnson. Six points for Deshaun Freeman off the bench. Five for both Johnny Griffin and Henry Hicks. Jeteran DeJaro with four all coming in the first half. And Nyree Mitchell five in the first half and four huge foul shots in the final quarter he ended up with nine super substitute for coach jasper williams once more 52 to 45. and we're waiting as the hats are being put on the heads of the trojans of blue township We have, have we had the MVP? I'm assuming it has to be Donald Moore. I think the plaque is still on the trophy tray. But the photo's being taken right now in a jubilant group there in the royal blue of Trojan blue, gold, and white. And it belongs to the school from Chicago Heights from the Southland Conference and the NIU graduate head coach Jasper Williams.
I see that plaque still on the tray, so they have not presented the MVP yet. But as you said earlier, Coach, I think it is a no-brainer. Donald Moore should be the recipient of that. We're going to recap for you while we wait for that presentation. The odds-on favorite, Seton Academy, was strong out of the gate, 71-57 over Thornton on Monday. Check that Tuesday, 88-71 over Rich Central on Monday. That score was a Tuesday game over Thornton. Then they defeated, they looked like they were in control and then fell behind big time against Crete Money and lost in OT yesterday, 67-66. And perhaps for both schools coming out here today as both Seton Academy lost the third place game and Crete Money lost the championship. As we had said before, perhaps just such a physically draining game. It was just like almost a Peoria atmosphere here at Rich South High School with all of the playoff state implications, it seemed at least, as far as atmosphere went and crowd involvement. But a overtime loss, Crete Money managed to win by a point, and then both those participants ended up losing today. For Bloom, they started the tournament 70-47 over Corliss of Chicago, 56-47 over Marion Catholic on Tuesday, 69-51 over Rich South, the host, yesterday. And then coming in here and handling Crete Money for the championship, 52-45. It's always about that red-haired fellow, the man that they say makes all the Big Macs, Ronnie McDonald. And it looks like his day here is done. He heads to the exits. Jordan Perry, part of the all-tournament team, as is Laquan Treadwell. From Bloom Township, Johnny Griffin. Mark Connor and Marvy Keith, also all tournament selections. And there it is, most valuable player in the 39th annual. McDipper Classic goes to the six foot senior point guard who averages 18 points a ball game. He had 11 on Tuesday, 10 yesterday, and 14 tonight. And he is the tournament MVP for Coach Jasper Williams and Bloom Township. And they themselves are the champion for 2011 at the McDipper 39th Annual Holiday Tournament in Richmond Park and Ridge South High School. While the photos and all of the accolades are finaling up here, we're going to thank a long list of people. And if I miss them, and I miss you, I am so sorry. But first of all, That's okay, we wanna make mention to all the help that we've had from the tournament director, Mark Hopman, who is one beautiful gentleman and a excellent administrator and tournament director. The AD here for 11 years at Ridge South and the tournament director for as long and also his head basketball coach, Scott Ritter, who was also very giving of his time and energy here for this tournament and for all the information provided for all the teams and the bulletins and all of the program information that we have been given. And I would be amiss to tell you I gave it all out to you because there's still an encyclopedia worth that I haven't had the chance to do. And my partner Earl Young here who's been here for all 31 games, 
I can't tell you how much this gentleman has worked. But he has been a stalwart throughout, a yeoman's effort for the last four days, starting on Monday and finishing tonight, Friday night. Coach Trey Stoner, thank you for all your time, Coach. It was an excellent time working for you. And any last thoughts? It was a great tournament, Jimmy, and Moore deserved the, the MVP trophy. He put on a spectacular performance, unselfish to the end, and great defense by the Bloom team. And Jasper Williams also deserved to, uh, to win the championship. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. We'll be speaking, hopefully, in the future. The proud graduate of Hales Franciscan also. We want to shout out to Coach Gary London, whose team took fifth place here with a victory earlier over Thornton. To all the good folks down at the mothership, down in Austin, Texas, and I wish I was down there because I know you got to have better weather than we do. Elizabeth Cotter, Larry Cotter, and Micah Nolte, the internet guru, technical support for all of us at High School Cube, and for all the good folks in the Chicago end of the High School Cube operation. Kevin Doyle, Maureen Toner, Jimmy McAteer, our producer extraordinaire, who has really been more of a coordinator for these four tournaments that we had going on simultaneously since at least Tuesday, the 27th. We started here, of course, on Monday the 26th. We were the big dog for one day. And I have to tell you, it'll be hard to rival the fact that some of the talent down here at Rich South High School in Richland Park for this 39th annual McDipper. But we had them all for you. Hinsdale South, Proviso West, and all the way down south in Livingston County at Pontiac, Illinois, where Simeon stayed undefeated and defeated Peoria Manuel in a thriller by one, 48-47. And I have stopped here to look through all the papers for anyone else I need to thank. Proviso East on top in the first quarter against New Trier. So I reported to you New Trier is the champ, and that was erroneous because that final had not taken place yet. So I stand corrected. And the third place ball game, um, you did say, Earl, it was Peoria Manuel on top of Again, we are HighSchoolCube.com. Glad you have been with us for all of the highlights and lowlights of this tournament. And again, reminding you, you can come back to the Cube at any time and check any of these ball games out. And again, we reported earlier, again, Rockford-Auburn, the winner over Morgan Park in the third place game at Proviso West. And we do have a score in that ball game down in Pontiac, which uh, I'm waiting to give you. But again, the news here, the victory belonging to Bloom Township, the Trojans of Jasper Williams with the victory and the tournament trophy over Creepman E, 52-45. For everyone out there in Internet land, we want to thank you for coming along for all our tournaments. And like I said, there's still more action out there, so you don't have to be along with us any longer. We know this one has come to a close, and it has been Bloom Township that are already heading towards the bus with their hardware. The 2011 tournament champion at the McDipper down here in Rich South and Richton Park. I'm Jimmy Dragna, the Zesty Italian, wishing you and your families a very, very Merry Christmas and a most productive and safe New Year.
And once more, a shout-out to the family of the godfather of basketball in Chicago, McGlother Mac Irvin, as he did pass away earlier this week at 74. And I have to say, an amazing gentleman and a great family man and a just ambassador to the game and his memorial service today at West Point Missionary Church on Chicago's south side on Cottage Grove Avenue was rival to none as far as a basketball guy would go people having to wait out in the rain for more than an hour just to come in and pay their respects to the gentleman that meant so much to basketball and specifically high school basketball in Chicago. And a shout out to his family and prayers are with them for the gentleman that started Tilden Tech in the 50s and went on to play at Raleigh, North Carolina at St. Augustine. And also was an executive for the Xerox Corporation in the 90s. And the founder of the Mac Urban Fire, a club program that grew into national prominence, always involved in basketball. God bless you, Mr. Irvin. We remember you today. I'm Jimmy Dragner wishing you all the best for a 2012. And again, thanking you so much from the bottom of the high school cube, dot cubicles and hearts that we have. We'll see you next year. And hopefully you'll be back here again at Rich South with us and Richton Park. Happy New Year to you and all your families. And a big thanks again to Earl Young, the man who has done it all for us here today, our executive producer for HighSchoolCube.com. See you next year from Richton Park. Happy New Year.